Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, boys and girls. Happy feast day. Thank you. Today we celebrate the feast day of Mary, our mother, under the title of the Immaculate Conception. And whenever it's a celebration for our mother, it's a celebration for everybody in the family, right? And so it's a special day for us too, because God has so blessed Mary, our mother, in making her the Immaculate Conception. But boys and girls, I've got a test question for you. And it's actually a question that is appropriate for today, but even a lot of, I just shouldn't say a lot, but some adults don't know the right answer to it. And the question is, what is the Immaculate Conception? Today we celebrate the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. What is the Immaculate Conception? Yes. Go ahead. Yep, that's you. Yep. Stand up with the glass. Stand up if you can, all the way in the back. Mary was conceived without original sin. That's a good textbook answer. You got a hundred. All right. Mary was conceived in the womb of her mother and without original sin. Now let me tell you a story, boys and girls, to illustrate what we mean by the Immaculate Conception and Mary being conceived without original sin. And it's a true story. It took place in 1998. That's a long time ago, isn't it? How many of you were born in before 1998? Well, I don't know about anybody up here, right? It was a few years ago. Well, in 1998, there was a church in Ireland, and it was burned down. A fire got started inside the church, and it burnt down. And the fire started right by the statue of Mary, the Blessed Mother. And the whole church was consumed in smoke and flames, and completely destroyed, except for one thing. The statue of Mary. And what was so unusual was that the fire started by the statue, and the statue, guess what, was made of wood. What happens to wood in a fire, boys and girls? My. Exactly. It's usually the, one of the first things that goes on fire is wood, right? Right up. Right? Consumed in flames, usually. 
But miraculously, just the statue, and only the statue was on a marble base, like marble, like this, and that marble was destroyed, completely destroyed by the heat of the fire. There was a canopy over the statue made of plaster, completely destroyed and broken to pieces because of the fire. The entire church kaput, nothing left. And afterwards, the caretaker of the church said, I can't understand how the statue of Our Lady survived when everything else around it went to pieces. God certainly works in mysterious ways. You see, boys and girls, this is the Immaculate Conception. Mary was preserved from original sin, from the fire of original sin. Even though original sin has affected Adam and Eve and all of us, God preserved one of his creatures, Mary. And it shouldn't have happened, but God miraculously made it happen. And he made it happen for a very important reason. God wanted Mary to be the mother of his son, Jesus. God the Father, you see, had something that we don't have. And that is the ability to make the mother of his son, to create her. Now, if you had the ability to create your own mother, does anybody have that ability? Could you create your own mother? No, no. But God did. God's the only one in the universe that could create his own mother. Right? And he did. But if you had that ability, wouldn't you make your mother perfect? Right, boys and girls? How many of your mothers are perfect anyway? Right? Aren't your mothers... Wow. That's pretty good. Did you tell your mother that? Huh? Well, maybe not so perfect, but I'm sure they're very, very good. Right, moms? But God, you see, had the ability to make his mother, and he made her perfect, preserving her from the fires of of original sin, protecting her, making sure she would in no way be marred or marked in any way by original sin. And that's why we heard in that first reading from the book of Genesis, after an Adam and Eve commit original sin, and they take the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the thing that they're not supposed to do, and they disobey God. That's original sin, boys and girls. And that original sin affects all of us. We're all born in the state of original sin because of the sin of our first parents. Because we're born into a state of alienation from God. And we need baptism to be cleansed of original sin. Right? However, Mary was preserved from that. And in the book of Genesis, God promises that there will come a woman. A woman in which he will put enmity between you, he says to the serpent, and this woman. That word enmity is a word we don't use that often, do we, boys and girls? Does anybody know what it means? When God says, I will put enmity between you and the woman. What is God saying? What is God saying? Hunter. Exactly. Space in which one doesn't touch the other. There's no connection whatsoever. God puts enmity between the serpent, the devil, and the woman that's to come. Meaning that nothing of the devil has anything to do with Mary. And nothing of Mary has anything to do with the devil. You see, God was promising the immaculate conception. He was promising there that he would come and create a woman. The mother of his son. That has nothing to do with sin. Mary was going to be conceived with our original sin. And that was prophesied and predicted in the book of Genesis. And then we heard in the gospel. What did we hear? When the angel comes to Mary... And the angel Gabriel is going to ask Mary to be the mother, to accept her vocation. He says, hail, what? Hail, what comes after hail? What comes after hail? All right? Does anybody remember? What comes after hail? Now, now it's a little trick, it's a trick question, so be careful. Make sure you know the answer. All right? What comes after hail? Anybody? Yes, right there. Young lady in the white jacket. No, actually that's what we say in the Hail Mary. But what does the angel say? He calls her something else. The first time he talks to her, what else does he call her? Yes. No, not Hail Holy Queen. I know this is a tough question. Tough question. 
I know the older kids know it. Don't they? Come on, guys. Come on. Hail. You, did you listen to the gospel? Uh, one more try. One more try. Not hail mother. He says, hail full of grace. He calls her Mary a little bit later. But the first thing he says to Mary is not hail Mary. He says, hail full of grace. Mary is completely filled with God's grace and has nothing to do with sin whatsoever. He has preserved her from original sin and she's, she's like a glass of water completely full with God's grace. And if you're completely full with God's grace, you can't have anything in you that's of sin. All right, The glass is full. Mary's soul is filled. Hail full of grace. That's Mary's name before God. Every one of us has a special name before God. And we all, God knows that name. And we all have that name and it has to do with who we are in God's eyes. And who Mary is in God's eyes is the one who is full of grace. She is the Immaculate Conception. Alright boys and girls, so we have the Immaculate Conception and because of Mary being Immaculate Conceived, she's our mother. That's why God did it. God did it so that she could be our mother, she could feed us, she could teach us, and she can pray for us. She's the most powerful, strongest, best mother of all, and she's not just simply the mother of Jesus. She's also our mother too. Jesus gave us Mary the Immaculate Conception when he was dying on the cross, and he turned to John and said to her, Behold your mother. And he says the same to us, boys and girls. He's given us this great, great gift, the gift of his mother, who's immaculately conceived. Mary was indeed untouched by the fire of original sin, boys and girls. And we should remember, remember every day that Mary watches over you and me like a mother. She will share with us all the graces that she has been given by God. She will also help us to preserve us from sin whenever we run into trouble. And she will always be merciful and guide us even though sometimes we fall. So remember, boys and girls, we have a mother. And it's the same mother that God has. Her name is full of grace. Mary, the Immaculate Conception. She's your mother, my mother, all of our mothers. And so that's why we can ask her this day and every day, pray for us sinners now and what? At the hour of our death. Amen.